Hey YouTube, this is FireWizard23 here to talk about the second book in the Alex Ryder series, Point Blanc by Anthony Horowitz. Uh, spoilers. When we last left off, Alex had just finished his first adventure that kind of just landed on him through events, Stormbreaker. Uh, it is now the... Well, time has passed and stuff, and now he's kind of like... I, you know, I can't believe I just had this whole huge adventure, and now I have to go back to doing nothing. So, as it turns out, he sees those, like, drugs being passed out of the school, and he finds where the drug the drug dealers are. They're, like, on a boat just off the coast, like, like within, like, 500 feet of the police station. He goes into a construction site, hijacks a... I'm dead serious. This is exactly what happens. He hijacks a, a, a crane in a construction site, picks up the boat out of the water with the intention of guiding it over to the police station and dropping it in, in their parking lot. That's his intention, but it doesn't work because the whole thing... Buck, the whole crane bucks because it's not meant to hold a whole boat. And <laughs> he ends up getting caught. And when he's brought to the police station, they pull his name up, and they're, like, stunned when they realize who he is. And, like, nobody talks to him, but then Alan Blunt comes to see him. He's like, hey, Alex. Hello, Mr. Blunt. <laughs> and they're like, okay, you know, here's what we can do. Um, you can help us with another task that we have, or we can let the police have you. Which one do you want? Like, I just was trying to clean up the streets. Yeah. So they have him enroll in a, in a school called Point Blanc, which is a school for... Really, really rich kids, really, really rich families, kids who are brats. Like, it's designed to fix all their problems and all that. Like, it's, it's one of those away schools where they don't, where the really rich and powerful don't want people to know how bad their kids act, so they send them to these schools to make them, make them act better. And this very muscle lady, Mrs. Stellenbosch, comes to get him. And this is all purpose, uh, precipitated because a couple of people have died recently very mysteriously after the kids came back from the school and Alan Blunt's kind of like, you know, I don't believe in coincidences. You know, something's, something's going on here. This, this is really weird. This is happening. So we want, they want Alex to enroll pretending as if he's, a, he's the son of this really famous supermarket chain guy, uh, Mr. Friend. So they call him Alex Friend. And said, you're, you're going you're gonna to go in and you're going to infiltrate this place. Figure out what's going on. So he's taken by Mrs. Stellenbosch off to Paris because they're in England, remember. They go to Paris and they stay at a hotel for a night. This is how he drugs him. He drugs him, drugs him in the hotel, and he goes to his hotel room and passes out. To which his hotel room, the bed completely goes down to the secret laboratory where he's complete. His body is completely combed over, completely combed over, giving him a full physical examination. And it takes some some locks of his hair and everything, and he's sent back up. All his clothes are put back on, like nothing happened. He has no memory of this other than something weird happened. But he's taken to Point Blanc, and he meets the director there, Mr. Grief. It seems pretty normal to begin with. You know, there's only eight boys there. There's only eight, I think it's like eight or, I think it's like eight or ten, like really a slow number of kids. <clears throat> but what Alice notices is the kids, for the most part, all seem to behave very docilely. They don't really seem to be, he made a list of all of them, they're all 14-year-old boys, and none of them really seem to be acting any weirdly, except they all seem to act very uniformly. But he can't figure out why. There's one kid there who's like, you know, I'm getting the hell out of here tomorrow, Alex, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down this... This, they're on the top of a mountain, by the way, in the Alps. On top of a freaking mountain. That's where this academy is located. It's an, it's an old castle. And he's like, I'm getting out of here. But the next day, Alex hears the guy being being like... Here's the kid being like dragged on the stairs. And the next day, he sees him just... He sees him apparently come out of his bedroom totally okay. And Alex even pulls him aside and says, you know, weren't you planning on like go, running away and get out of here? He's like, oh, no, I, I abandoned that plan. He's like, What? Alex does a little interior snooping in the place, and he discovers there's two floors above the ca in the castle they're not allowed to see. He finally breaks into them and discovers they're an exact duplicate copy of the two floors they're living on. They have, like, living rooms, classrooms, and all that. By the way, the only two other people there are Mrs. Selenbosch and Dr. Grief. That's it. And there's, like, oh, there's, like, 30 security guards with machine guns everywhere also. <laughs> Apparently for, for their protection, of course. <laughs> and... What Alex discovers is he f actually finds the place where all the boys are being, the actual boys are being capped downstairs. And he's like, and they're like, they've made duplicates of us. But that's not me. They've made duplicates of us because, and this is the point where he's captured by Mrs. Stellenbosch and Dr. Grief reveals his evil plan. He has made 16 clones of himself, Dr. Grief. And we actually saw a guy get killed talking about like er, when Alex was uh, looking around, we snooping around, but we didn't exactly know what his purpose was. But Dr. Griffin hired a plastic surgeon. What he did is he surgically altered the faces and bodies of all the boys so they look like 
the kids of all these rich kids who came to Point Blanc, he's going to send them back so he has influence in all these important positions around the world. That's his intention. He's going to do that with all the clones he's made. And of course, Alex is like, you know, you never get away with this. But Alex is like, but he's, Dr. Grief is telling Alex, well, you know what? My boys have never, have, they've been asking to see, to see the inside of a human body. And I think I'll use you, but just no anesthetic. We'll cut you open, and I, longer, I wonder how long your heart will, uh, will hold out. Of course, we will then dissect your heart. You're mad! And uh, Alex manages to escape by snowboarding down the mountain. He snowboards down the mountain in this huge, great chase, and he gets away. It looks like he's dead, and actually misses... Um, he used the, he got, like, the cool gadgets and stuff again. He used a CD player to... He had a CD player that could... That could be used as a buzzsaw. buzzsaw. He had a thermal and bulletproof uh, ski suit and glasses that were... That could detect heat. Like, the thermal heat glasses. And he also had a pair... A diamond stud earring that he need only, like... He had, like, pulled apart and it's, like, a really powerful explosive. I, I think there might have been another one, but I can't remember. But he went there, but that's how, like, the stuff he used to escape. And Mrs. Jones, the co the co-director for the C of the MI6, she had been, they had been alerted and they went to go help him. And they faked him being dead. They faked him being dead because they wanted to be able to get back into Point Blanc. And they break into Point Blanc with the help of uh, Wolf, the guy that Alex met in the first book when he went to go for the training for MI6. They bust in, and they go guns blazing. You know, how could you? You've ruined us. And they, they beat him up. But Alex goes back to school, and he's called into the, into the school-wise principal. The principal's chair turns around, and it's the 16th clone who looks just like him. And they have this big fight in the top of the school, and, one of the, and there's like this explosion in the chemical lab, and one of the Alex's falls down. And actually, the book leaves it very open as to whether or not which Alex it was, but I can only presume that was actually the bad, the, the Cologne Alex that fell. And we're not told that he died. Interesting. We are not told that he died. In fact, even I've already read this. I, I feel bad that I was not able to do these consecutively as I was reading them. But even now, we're not given confirmation as to what exactly happened to that clone. Because we were told that all 16 of the other clones were captured and they're being, like, debriefed and stuff and, you know, mind wiped or whatever. But but Alex realized that there was a 16th one and here it is. So, yeah, I'm liking Point Blanc. I'm hoping... <laughs> See, I so fucking ruined it. I was hoping to do these as they happened, but unfortunately life just kind of got in the way and I had to do something. But I'm hoping... And as it turns out, yes, these books start to get... We start to get a little deeper into things with these books. And I, I like that. We... They're, they're, this, this won't be just the standard adventure all the time. There's going to be some weird stuff happening here and there. So, uh, this is Firewizard23. Take care and bye-bye. Bye-bye for now, everybody.